Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a Prehistoric Planet video. So today, I am going to be giving my review on the first season of Prehistoric Planet. The next season comes out in a few days, so I wanted to upload this video before then. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Prehistoric Planet is one of the best dinosaur documentaries I have watched. It looks visually amazing, and the dinosaurs look great in the environments that they are in. The CGI looks great, and it's hard to find a time where it doesn't. The roster of dinosaurs and other extinct animals is also really good. The show also has a lot of really cool and interesting facts, like the Tyrannosaurus being able to swim, which was mentioned in Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. The show also has some humorous moments, like the Carnotaurus hand scene that everybody thinks is funny. So, now you know the generics of the show, let's talk about every episode, starting with episode 1, Coasts. In this episode, we can see the T-Rex swimming to an Archelon carcass, and we can see baby T-Rexes hunting which is really cute and funny. We see baby Alcyones taking their first flight and being attacked by Barbarodactylus on their way to the Mist Forest. We can also see a Mosasaurus being cleaned and getting into a fight with another Mosasaur for territory. Tyrannosaurus digesting gizzard stones, as well as defending a pregnant one from a Kaikaifalu, and Ammonites displaying bioluminescence, which looks really good. Episode 2, Deserts. The episode begins with a herd of male Drenatus showing off their displays to female Drenatus. However, one male decides to challenge the bull, which ends up with the bull collapsing and the male coming out on top. Next, we see a velociraptor attempting to hunt small lizards next to some sleeping Tarbosaurus. Then we see Mononychus hunting termites using the face discs to hear the faintest of noise. A rainstorm happens, which causes flowers to sprout, and we see Mononychus attempting to hunt birds and other animals in a really cool-looking environment. Then, in my favorite scene from the episode, we can see animals like the Quetzalcoatlus, Barsboldia, Mononychus, the Megatosaurus, and more, until a Tarbosaurus shows up to take a drink of water. I think it's really cool to see carnivores and herbivores coexisting, which is why I like the scene so much. After all the water dries up, we see Barbarodactylus fighting atop a plateau, and performing their displays. We also learn that not all male Barbarodactylus develop large crests. These Barbarodactylus are called the Sneaky Males. The sneak has been spotted by a larger male, but it's revealed that he caught the eye of another one, which leads to a funny scene. Then, in the gypsum dunes, we see the Caesarnosaurus, eating what's left of the vegetation. The area has dried up, and there is no vegetation left, so they wait for nightfall to move. It's revealed that the terrain is hard to navigate, so the hadrosaurs use the stars as a map. The herd moves on, and hears a sound that is so low that only they can hear it. The sound indicates that they have reached their destination. Episode 3, Fresh Water. The episode begins with a massive flock of pterosaurs flying to and around a waterfall. Three velociraptors organize an attack on the unaware pterosaurs. The female raptor goes high, while the two males stay low. The female drops down on one of the pterosaurs and ends up alerting the entire flock. The female runs away with her meal, while the two males attempt to deal with the rest of the colony. Next, we see a victorious tyrannosaur standing next to a fallen triceratops. During the off-screen battle, the T-Rex received multiple wounds that needed to be cleaned. While cleaning the wounds in the river, another T-Rex shows up. The Tyrannosaur happens to be a female. The male makes it clear that he's not looking for a fight, and displays to the female. The other Tyrannosaur approves, and they wander off into the forest. Then we see the dinosaur that a lot of people were excited for, the Dinochirus. We can see it grazing on some underwater foliage that it grabs with its 8-inch claws. After feeding, the Dinochirus is attacked by some flies, and decides to deal with the irritation by scratching itself on a tree. We can see a Quetzalcoatlus flying above a river. This Quetzalcoatlus is a pregnant female, who lands in the forest and searches for the best place to build a nest. After constructing a nest and laying its eggs, the Quetz defends it for a few days before leaving to search for food. In the Quetz's absence, another female finds the nest and starts to eat the eggs. The mother returns in time to defend the eggs. Unfortunately, most of them were eaten, and only three remain. In Madagascar, we can see one of the most interesting dinosaurs, the Mexicosaurus. This dinosaur has a curved bottom jaw, with needle-like teeth. We can see an adult and three juveniles hunting crabs on the sand, but one of the juveniles unknowingly gets too close to a large amphibian. This animal is the Beelzebufo, which is an enormous frog that preys on younger and smaller dinosaurs. And finally, we can see the Elasmosaurus moving through the murky waters of the river. Episode 4, Ice Worlds. The episode begins in the far north of America. We can see dromaeosaurs roaming around in the snow. These dromaeosaurs sport feathers, which is a great way of keeping warm in the colder regions. Once the sun rises for the first time in months, a herd of hadrosaurs walks by and have to cross a freezing cold river. However, the hadrosaurs have to protect their young who are being hunted by the dromaeosaurs. After the dromaeosaurs attack, 
The herd is forced to make a quick crossing onto the river, but an unlucky juvenile falls into the water. The juvenile is almost swept away, but makes a lucky escape. Then we can see a network of islands, which are nesting grounds for male ornithomimus, who are working on nests for the females. One male shows up late and has to build a nest on the outskirts, but there's a shortage of material. This male decides to take resources from another nest, which leads to a funny scene. Next, we see a herd of Oloro Titans, which are on their way to a new nesting ground, which happens to be in a large volcanic region. They constantly come back here to nest because the ground is nice and heated enough for the eggs. Sometime later, the eggs hatch, which reveals some really cute baby Oloro Titans. We can see the Oloro Titans grazing on horsetail, and the babies grow a little. Unfortunately, mosquitoes also nest in the water nearby, which causes great irritation and can be fatal to the juveniles. And in a really sad scene, one baby is left behind, but it's okay because he comes back later, which put a smile on my face. In North America, we can see a massive forest fire that has started due to electrically charged air. Not too many animals stay due to the fire, but we can see a true daunted roaming and hunting around the forest. In the southern hemisphere of Antarctica, we can see some small Antarctopelta. Since the winter is coming, these Antarctopelta look for a place to rest, but their old den doesn't quite hold all of them anymore. So one individual enters a cave with some really cool bioluminescence from fungus larvae. We can see a herd of Pachyrhinosaurus, and we see two males battling for dominance, but a group of Nanooksaurus appear and force the herd to retreat into a blizzard. But the Nanooksaurus follow and force the herd to stand together. But the blizzard gets increasingly worse, which causes a treaty between the two species. Once the blizzard is over, the Pachyrhinosaurus run, but one can't keep up and is forced to face the three Nanooksaurus. And the final episode, episode five, Force. We begin in South Africa, where we can see a herd of sauropods walking through the tall trees. These sauropods are none other than Ostroposeidon. We learn that their teeth are used to cut plants instead of chewing. Although they have long necks, some of the trees are taller than they are. So we can see them knock some trees down so they can easily access the leaves. The next species we can see is a herd of Triceratops, who graze upon the ferns, which actually contain a poisonous toxin. To deal with the poisons, they head to a cave. In the darkness, the calves have to stay close, but unfortunately, one youngster is separated from the rest. At the end of the cave, we can see the Triceratops consuming a special clay, called Quailinx. The mother notices that her calf is not with her, but by communication, the calf finds his way. Now, I'm sure you all know what comes next. Yes, it's the Carnotaurus. We can see this male Carno calling out. A female Carnotaurus appears. The male attempts to impress her by waving his arms, which everyone thinks is funny, and it is a funny scene after all. In East Asia, we can see that autumn has arrived early. We can see a really cool looking dinosaur called Carithoraptor, and we can see them eating the nuts of ginkgo trees. A predator lurks nearby, and it is the Chansasaurus, which ends up failing the first time, but manages to catch a Carithoraptor on the second attempt. In North America, we can see another wildfire. During the wildfire, we can see animals like the Edmontosaurus with its juveniles. After the fire clears out, we can see animals like Atrociraptors hunting down beetles, and Ankylosaurus who eat the charcoal from the burnt trees, which will help with the toxins from the plants it eats. Back in Central Asia, it is nighttime, and we can see a sleeping sauropod and some juvenile Therizinosaurus attempting to get honey from a bee's nest. They have some difficulties climbing up to get it. An adult Therizinosaurus comes by and knocks it down for them. During the day, we can see small Zalmoxis crossing over a log, but one of them is snatched up by a Hatsigopteryx. The Hatsigopteryx walks onto the beach, and we can see many other creatures as well. We can see the Tomatosaurus, Zalmoxis, and a unidentified sauropod. And the final shot of the season is the Hatsigopteryx taking off from the beach and flying off into the distance. So, that was Prehistoric Planet Season 1. I really enjoyed it, I liked the soundtrack, the cinematography was excellent, and the dinosaur designs were incredible. I've already made a video talking about when the second season will come out, and when it does, I will post a video for each episode, so stay tuned for that. But, that is going to have to wrap up this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to press the like button, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!